Hi, thanks for the intro and thanks for moderating. Um, it takes a lot of, I mean, in-person conferences are a lot of work, but remote conferences, uh, especially for so many of us are very new. Uh, and so I just really appreciate all the work you all are doing. Uh, and it's it's a lot of work. So um, attendees, I hope you are enjoying it and appreciative of the work that goes into this. Uh, so I'm gonna get started with how Terraform's simple graph concepts deploy complex infrastructure as code. And let's see, make sure, yes, all the things are wired. Uh, so my name is Pam Selly. I'm a senior software engineer at HashiCorp. I work on the Terraform core team. So I work on the Terraform open source project. And uh, outside, I live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the US. And outside of programming at HashiCorp, I also make music using programming through what's a method known as live code. Uh, all my music's online at beats.thewebaboard.com. I write uh, on thewebaboard.com as my blog. Uh, and if you would like to mention this talk uh, or keep track of me on Twitter, my handle is at Pamasaur. There's a whole dinosaur theme with Pamasaur the Webaboard. And what we're going to do today is we're going to go on a behind the scenes tour of Terraform. So this is the DevOps track. So you might already be familiar with Terraform, but I wanted to keep this really accessible. Uh, and so I'm going to actually go over some Terraform concepts at the beginning, which will also help us for the bulk of this is going to be a source code tour. And so I'm going to go, well, actually my colleague Pam has gone through the source code. And so I'll show a video of going through that source code. And then I'll be right here in the chat uh, to it for any questions as that source code tour goes along. And um, so we'll talk about what Terraform does uh, and how it works and where in that source code tour we'll encounter the graph theory. That is the core computing concept that allows Terraform to do what it does. So Terraform is an open source CLI tool that allows you to define your infrastructure as code. And you use a simple human readable language called HCL, uh, HashiCorp configuration language. Uh, and that allows you to write a configuration file that then expresses your infrastructure. Quick reminder on infrastructure as code being the idea that before infrastructure as code, you, or even if you don't use infrastructure as code, you artisanally configure your environments, you log in, and especially in the cloud oriented world, you're logging into these consoles, or maybe you use a, the AWS CLI to spin up infrastructure. Uh, in the infrastructure as code world, the idea is that instead of doing all that manual configuration, which can be very brittle and keep knowledge in silos, is that you have a configuration that you can then share and version and have a reproducible understanding of your infrastructure. And from a diagram view, so this is off of the Terraform website, is that if you are the practitioner, you write infrastructure as code, which may use public modules, um, and I'll get to modules, and then you run the Terraform plan or apply commands, uh, and those interact with providers. That's that little logo wall there at the bottom. And those uh, by that interaction will create real world infrastructure. But how does it work? And the answer at its core, the core computing concept that makes the whole thing work is graph theory. And so before the source code tour and the great reveal of graph theory, I'm gonna go over some Terraform concepts that'll be helpful for us to understand. We'll see these along the waypoints as we go through the source code. So first of all, being the configuration files, the hcl.terraform files. This is the basic shape of a Terraform file. We have a, wonder if my, I don't know if the pointer will work, but um, so we have the resource keyword and we have a type of AWS S3 bucket. We gave it a name of foo and then we have attributes or arguments uh, that are, ah, thank you for confirming that it's working, uh, that the, that we pass through. And these will be determined by the provider, um, which are the plugins that define the shape of those resources or data sources and define how the, that communication happens to make them exist in the real world. And so declaring a provider, uh, we have provider blocks and then the required providers uh, is where you declare at a uh, a full project level of what the versions of your providers are so that you can make sure that those, no surprise changing your versions. 
Um, providers are responsible for API interactions and exposing resources to be used in the configuration. Many of providers correspond to cloud providers, but it's not limited to that. And what actually what happens is the provider is a plugin that interacts with core. So when I talk about Terraform core, which is what I work on and the source code that we're going to look at, that's the project that reads the configuration and then communicates with these providers over a plugin protocol. And then the provider is responsible for managing the relationship with whatever its real world real world representation is. And so that's what I mean when we say like th there are things that providers do and then things that Terraform Core does. And a lot of things are in the provider domain, uh, especially since Terraform 013 came out earlier in 2020 that publishing and using community providers got so much easier uh, due to some upgrades in Terraform Core and how we understand providers and some upgrades on the uh, improvements and enhancements on the Terraform registry side at registry.terraform.io. Um, so providers, just to emphasize that Terraform does not exist without providers and they're extremely useful uh, and they're really great. <laughs> and now, so back to configuration, some more configuration concepts. Uh, named variables. There are a few different kinds of named, uh, named values is that we have variables, locals, and outputs. If we gave this as an analogy, if you're, if you're familiar with programming, this would be an input variable is like a function argument. So into a module, which is the next topic, uh, output values are like return values. So the return values of a module and then local values, uh, local vary are like the temporary local variables. So if you need to, in this example, we have an expression, so using a function, so we call it an expression, uh, that changes the variable to a capitalized value, and then we use that in an output. Just a simple, trivial example. And uh, so when we talked about those inputs and outputs from modules, so what are modules? Modules are groups of, groups of configuration. Terraform is made up of modules. Every Terraform configuration has at least zero or one modules. So even if you don't have any anything in your config that has the word module in it, you have a Terraform module because that itself is a Terraform module. And, and also that a Terraform module can be made up of multiple files. So if they're in the same directory, they're part of the same module. Um, so this example, we have a just a, a single module where we have a resource and the resources refer to each other. So we create the network and the uh, compute instance has a network that references that network. Uh, so we have a, a module of, with resources and relationships. In this example, we have a module that has a module call. So this here is, call, is a module call. And so we have the module keyword, oops, and the name of foo. And in that case, we have an output here. And this is how this module exposes information to a consumer of the module. And so it has, so we reference it by this name and referencing the output name over here. So name values. And a state and backend. So how Terraform understands what the dip, like where your configuration has been applied and what exists in the real world, that's Terraform state. Uh, there's a whole document, if you're curious about why is Terraform need state, there's a whole document about that, um, but that's an important file to know exists. Uh, and backends determine where the state is stored and where operations run. So for example, if I am working with someone else and we have a Terraform state that we're both collaborating on because we both work on the same infrastructure, then if I, so we, ha we put uh, in a remote state storage backend uh, and then that way, when say I run Terraform and I interact with the state, then the other person on my team, there will be a lock so that they can't interact with state and have bad things happen um, by applying more than one thing at once. And so remote state helps us do collaboration. It also determines where operations run. So uh, we'll see this in the source code, um, but this is a concept that exists in Terraform currently that might change um, that remote state and where your state is stored and where your operation runs is what a backend is. 
some Terraform commands. There are lots of Terraform commands, but some of the main ones that we're going to focus on are Terraform init, Terraform plan, and Terraform apply. So init downloads any modules because you might use a module from the registry or from a GitHub reference. And so that will do all the downloading and installation and get that in the right place. Terraform plan is what do we plan to build and Terraform apply is running a plan and then giving you the option to do it, which will always have a confirmation step. Um, there's so much more. There's so, 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 so much more. Uh, and some of the places you could go to learn more about the core concepts of Terraform would be the configuration docs, the command docs, and I would say check out the Terraform registry for both providers and modules. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it off to my colleague, Pam, who has uh, the code tour. So. And then once this is going, I'm going to mute my video or my current time video. Uh, and then I'll be in the chat to answer questions. And oops, I think I did not, I need to make sure I share sound. Thanks, Pam. Okay, sound working, check. Just gonna wait for that confirmation. Thank you, cool. I'm going to hide and hand it off to my, uh, to the other Pam. Thanks, Pam. I'm Pam, and I'm going to be taking us on our code tour today. So before we start though, let me check something. Okay, it appears that the bubble is secure and we can go ahead and do the source code tour. So, however, before we go on source code two, I did want to show you one more thing. So I have a Terraform configuration file here. So this main.tf gonna show you what it says it has a declaration of a resource called that of type random pet called a foo and it has a some arguments that are going to impact how this resource is made and i'm going to run terraform init first to go get my provider and so that gets my my random provider plugin and i am going to run a terraform plan which tells me what would happen if I apply this configuration. And I'm going to run a Terraform apply. And that runs the plan and then also asks if that's something that I want to do. I say yes, it is. And now if I run Terraform show to show what I have in state, then I see that I have the random pet. So this is important so that we can see some waypoints for what we're going to look at. So in this dive, we're going to go through from how we enter into the Terraform program through running a whole Terraform plan. And so Terraform is a Go project. And so it's a compiled Go program. If you ever want to use the latest, latest Terraform, probably not a great idea to do that in production. But if you do want to do that, you can always go install the Terraform package as a Go program. Uh, and you'll have the Terraform binary. So for this case, I have Terraform and I have Terraform version using the, the beta one version of the Terraform 014. And so in a compiled Go program, the main entry point for any program is the main package. And in specifically in that main package, the main function. And this has the, we wrap the real main. So real main, uses a package called panic wrap, which does some some wrapping so that we get good log files and such when you have an error in Terraform, which ideally doesn't happen. But when it does, we want to make sure we have good information. And so then wrapped main is the probably where the actual main work happens. And we're setting the output for the logs if we have trace logs going some information. We're loading the CLI config. So this is a, a separate package dedicated to the CLI config. And let's note that this is related to the CLI, not Terraform configuration. So CLI configuration, not Terraform configuration is happening right now. I'm loading that config and da, da, da. we carry on. We're setting up service discovery because we might need that for various applications. 
setting up our understanding of providers. I'm going to dig into this one a little bit. So this is initializing the backends. So there are backends are where state is stored, but also where the operation is run. At least this is currently true in Terraform now. So there are two kinds of enhanced backends where they both store state and operations. And those are the local and remote backends. So remote is say Terraform Cloud, Terraform Enterprise. A local is if I run like what I just did, where I ran Terraform, local, uh, Terraform apply on my machine. Um, if you store remote state, then these are the different kinds of backends that are not enhanced backends, but uh, they are uh, where you can store your state remotely. Say like if I wanted to collaborate with someone else and we want to share a state file. And so we now have an understanding of what our backend possibilities are so that when we get to that point of loading our backend, it'll we'll have our options ready. We're going to initialize the command. So the, the CLI package used to create servers, the Terraform CLI program, the CLI package uh, is responsible for building that CLI program. And it takes a, a commands uh, object. And that happens in this init commands function where we're defining all the commands that are available for Terraform. And on this dive, we're going to look at plan. So I'm actually going to go ahead and crack open so that we have it open the plan command. So now we have that open. All right, uh, we run checkpoint if we need to, which is a, a network request you that does some reporting on using Terraform CLI. And we and if you if there's a new version of Terraform, it tells you that it does it does helpful things like this. And we merge our environment arguments da, 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 and then building the CLI is built. And now we run it. And so what this does, which is that separate package, um, it, it wraps a, a few things, but ultimately what it's going to do is it's going to call run for the given command. So that command is a implementation of the command interface and the run function is what's going to get called when we're actually running the command with the CLI. So we run Terraform binary and we've passed a plan verb to it and that leads to this. So in this case, we're setting up our various command line flags. Uh, we have a situation, so if you if we wrote Terraform plan and we passed it plan files and argument, uh, we say, hey, you can't do that. Uh, and you, you can't do that and why, and if you want to do something else, do this. And this is a great example of using the TF diags package, so the diagnostic package that Terraform uses. And so we use this all around Terraform for TF diags for handling, for showing and handling errors and warnings. And so it, in this case, this we created in this block here, we created a, uh, right in, in line, we created a sourceless diagnostic. So it means it doesn't have a source reference. A lot of the diags have source references to help you if say there's a bug that you need to fix or an expression with an error, things like that. And we go ahead and show diagnostics and return from this command at, at this point. So bailing out at, at an invalid situation. So, but yeah, so we see this everywhere. And now we are setting up our backend. And so loading the backend config, so that's uh, reading the backend configuration, which would look like, so we have a backend configuration, it'll be in the, the Terraform block, and it'll look like, say, uh, you know, something like this, and have the appropriate fields that it needs to do that. And then we, given that uh, config on the backend, we're going to load the backend. And so this function, so it's in the, the meta backend package to, it does a little bit of work as far as checking various options, uh, passing options to it if we need to, so CLI options. And as a result of loading that, if it's an enhanced backend, we go ahead and return it. And remember that there are enhanced backends and remote state storage backends. And so if we have a remote state storage backend, we're going to build a new with backend backend, which is a local backend with a backend of type 
whatever the remote state storage backend was. And so that's how we end up with a fully usable backend that can perform operations and handle state storage. And show any diagnostics and reset them. And now we're going to build the operation. So the, the various operations that Terraform runs. So it might be, a, in this case, we're going to build a plan. Um, so various operation types so that you can have a fresh plan and apply. And we're initially setting up a config loader, uh, which creates a instance of config load, uh, create a, a new loader for us. So config loader loader, uh, which will use the parser to create the configuration uh, and install relevant modules. Um, and so we collect variable values. So from the various locations that variables can be. So if you define a variable, it can be in, say, you can pass it as command line argument, you can pass it in a TF bears file. And so we collect those values here. And da da da. Going to skip over this part and go ahead and go to run the operation. So this abstract situation is on the still in the command package meta run operation and it normalizes the path and handles the some of the the exit uh, so handling the channel uh, that goes on in in this so going to that back end operation that just shops it out to the the interface of whatever instance of back end we have that is implementing the operation we in our dive we happen to know that we are using the local backend and let's find the operation so there's our operation go ahead and crack this open don't say whatever i did there and so the operation will say call the appropriate function for what operation is happening and in this case we're going to end up hitting this path and we set up our contacts that are necessary for if you cancel and if you you know hard exit uh then da -da -da -da, run the operation so run the function and what function do we have right we have the plan function and now we're in the so now we're in we've also we wandered around a little bit in our, our packages so we are now in the back end local package um so the local package and in the plan function specifically which takes our contacts takes the operation that we constructed and starting the plan and so we have some checks to make sure we have config setting up the count hook. So this keeps track as we run through the plan of the summary of the resource changes. So created, removed. Um, so how we keep track of those counts as we go. So getting our context, make sure I keep this open. Don't need that anymore. And so this we're creating our Terraform uh, context. So this will get us into the Terraform package. So we uh, now we get state so we're so this is uh related to our, our state manager and we request the state lock so remember we we lock the state for safety and da, 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 reading the remote state and we use this to eventually so get our our state and state is handled in the states package conveniently create a Terraform context, but not quite. We're going to create a Terraform context with this context direct because we use a different context if it's if we have a plan file. Because remember, that function is not specific to plan. It's used for other operations too. And so context direct, so we are going to load our configuration. So this is going to get us, now we're seeing the configs package. And so we are loading the config. Using that config loader, it's going to parse and it's going to uh, walk our our configs because it could be many uh, many modules and maybe those modules load other modules. So we think of this like walking a tree and we're going to end up returning that config. And let me see if, let's poke just a little bit. 
And so create a new module. And that module is in the, so we're now in the config. So creating a new module looks like this and the various, so the various components of a module of the providers, the variables, module calls, manage resources. So this is of type of resource uh, and that's, so when we load a module, now we have it in this, we've gone from that, that HCL structure in your config file to now it's in Terraform as a uh, construct in, in Go that we can now interact with. Setting the config for the, setting, setting the variables, and then creating that context using that new context method, which is how all Terraform context gets made, and then returning that. So now we have our Terraform context, which is gets us into the Terraform package. And assigning the state to that value, because remember that's what we did over there is we went and got the state. And now we are going to run the plan in a Go routine so it can get interrupted. And in, now we're in the Terraform package. So Terraform plan. So we create, so we create a new changes object, uh, which will get populated throughout this plan running. Uh, again, making some checks for things, creating an instance of a plan, another package that we're seeing. So plan is responsible for the understanding of a Terraform plan. Our operation is a plan. Ooh, graphs. Now we have hit graphs. So the graph type is graph type plan. And then we are going to create our graph. And depending on, so depending on the kind of operation we're running, we're gonna use a different kind of graph uh, because the, the shape might be different. So in validate, which is only checking for syntactic correctness, we don't need to do some things that we need to do in a plan because we're just, we're basically spell checking, um, not just spell checking, but kind of. So in the graph type plan, we're going to use the plan graph builder and we're going to build that graph. And so in this case, so these are graph transformers. So in a graph, so the graph is a, a any graph we can consider as a set of nodes uh, or these are also called vertices and these in my hand, my hands are circles in this scenario. So circles and lines. So the graph is made up of circles and lines and those circles and lines are called nodes or vertices and those lines are called edges. And those edges could be directed. So if they have an arrow on the end of them, they're directed. So a directed edge. And if you have a graph where you have nodes and edges and arrows, and you have them pointing to each other. So let's say A points to B and B points to A, that's called a cycle. So a cycle is when you have a, like a, a reference that, that points through a loop. And in you, if you have a graph that you created that has no cycles, then it's an acyclic graph. So an acyclic graph has no cycles. And so Terraform is built on a directed arrows acyclic no cycles graph bunch of nodes in the edges and so in the graph builder this is where we create the graph yeah and each of these is a, a set of steps that is going to add nodes and edges to our graph and i wanted to look at one transformer in particular on this dive so we're going to look at the module expansion transformer and so before Terraform 013, modules, and this is, I guess, more interesting if you've used Terraform already, but modules are a concept and they are not actually nodes on the graph. And this changed in Terraform 013, which allows you to have multiple instances of a module. So in the same way, so this has been around for a while, is that if I wanted more than one, I can expand this to have a count. Um, and then as of last year, I can also have this be for each and have this be a set of, of strings. And so for modules, modules could not expand in the same way until Terraform 013 because they weren't actually represented in the graph as nodes. So we couldn't visit them in the way that we visit things in Terraform. And so this transformer allows us to do that. So this transformer uh, for any module calls. So if in our config, 
if we have, oops, if we have, if we have a module call, so this would be if I had a, a module defined there, um, so a module call, this will add a, uh, so in this transform, so this transformer, when it's called, will, for that call, create a expansion module, or sorry, a expansion node uh, that might expand into multiple module instances. It might be it might be one or more or well, or zero. Uh, you could have a call with a count of zero, and we'll add that node to the graph. And then, so that's adding a node. And then, if we if we have an parent to connect it to, we say this node has to wait for its parent to expand. And there we add an edge. We add a line from the expander to the parent node so that when the we're about to, when we walk the graph, we visit things in the right order so that things are created when we're ready for them. And so we also add a, a close because uh, expansion in expanding the modules is a like a subgraph. So we're entering into the subgraph where we expand a bunch of things or not. And then we have an exit when we exit that graph so that we know that we're done. And for the graph vertices, we check to make sure that we connect things that need to be. And so if uh, we if the paths are equal, make sure that they're connected and do recursion to make sure we visit. And if there's you know further calls, uh, go ahead and do that. And then and that's the creating the uh, the transform. So uh, I want to look at that graph builder plan again. Because a question you might have could be, hey, it looks like you added a lot of edges. Doesn't that make the graph complicated or at least difficult to reason about? And you would be right. And the answer to that question is that we have the transitive reduction transformer. So this is to make the graph more understandable. And so this will perform the graph's transitive reduction method, which has it's, it's an algorithm. So using graph theory means that we can benefit from using graph theory concepts and theorems that have been proved because that's how mathematics works. Uh, and so we can use proven uh, algorithms for this. So let's make sure we finish going through the plan uh, because we no we haven't because we created the graph but we haven't done the walk yet. And so we're going to look at that. So do the walk. So in this case, we are starting the graph walk. And so we watch the walk the graph. And da da da, which calls that. And we have our walk function where we are visiting these vertices. Ah, neat. And then if it is a module instance, so in this case, so if it's, an, if it's a module instance, we're going to enter that path and exit the path. If the node is executable, then execute it. Uh, because we have uh, some are uh, so if it has implements that interface we run that function so walk or execute and if it's dynamically expand and expand it uh, this applies to resources that have count for each uh, and some probably some other dynamically expanded resources um, or nodes so that's the graph so we so we create a structure of a bunch of circles and lines we do that for a bunch of different cases. So we um, the graph builder plan. We did that for our, we add our things that are represented in state, things that are represented in the config, uh, and making adjustments as we notice various things, uh, adjustments for references, dependencies, if targeting is used. So these transforms are separated in the location for that concern, which helps make it easier to reason about. And we walk, once we have that graph, we walk the graph and visit all the vertices, and then we have our result. Or we haven't yet, we'll get there. So we did the plan, and we handle relevant exits. We didn't save the plan to disk. And then if we have a CLI to output to, which is not always true, uh, we will put print out diagnostics and we'll render the plan 
rendering the plan is printing out all the stuff that we saw in the CLI that it created using our, our count count hook of the, the various things and performing the following actions. And then I find this interesting because this is in the formatting, the resource change is a pretty significant bit of code for providing that, that report out to the, out to the output here. So this is a resource change that we output. So uh, let me see something and, you know, let's, let's edit the, this so that we have a change and we'll, then we'll run a Terraform plan, but this time I'm going to use, a, have the trace on, and this is how we tend to debug Terraform uh, as core developers is using this trace log, uh, which this is how it looks now. It's going to change, um, but this is how it looks now. And so when we run a plan, we actually also run a validate too. So we we'll, might run into that. So let me make sure that I'm in the plan output and not the validate output. Oop, nope, I'm in the validate. So, but what I am scrolling rapidly fast here is we are building a graph, haha. -ha. We are calling the plan. So this is after the, the validate. So we call the plan, build a graph plan, transform with the config transformer. The config transformer sees that we have a resource in the config and we run a bunch of transformers. We report out what happened. We attach a, a, a resource config transformer. Uh, and this is where we have our expand, we get our provider node and and eventually, because see this has that expand, it's an expand planable resource. And we eventually through the count transformer, we find that we have more than one instance now, right? And so see how this graph is changing through each of these transformers. And then our transitive reduction transformer simplifies it. And then as we visit, we're going to walk and enter that. So that's a dynamic, dynamically expandable. And let's see, expanding dynamic subgraph. And we now have, ah, ah, see, sorry, this is a, since things run on different uh, areas we'll see this output in different places but yeah so now we have our zero and one and transforming transforming and we have a because uh, we have our first instance already so this is actually only going to create the second instance And now we have our two instances because we actually used, reuse, there's that count boundary transformer does this, is where we reuse our zeroth uh, instance as uh, a member of the count instance. And yeah, so I I think we I think we did it. I think I'm ready to hand it back to Pam. Um, but we we ran the plan and we rendered the plan, and that drops us out to, you know, we returned the exit code, which was zero because it ran fine. And now we've gone through the Terraform source code. All right, I'll hand it back to Pam. All right, uh, so I hope you all enjoyed that for what it was. Uh, and so what did we learn? Uh, we hopefully learned some of the basics of, oh, I have that pointer everywhere. But basics of what Terraform is, uh, the parts that make up Terraform and its ecosystem, uh, definitely not exhaustive. There's so much to learn uh, toward the source of Terraform core. Uh, and I have a few links here that are, if you like this talk, but want something else, if you like this talk, but want more graph theory and less source code, there's a talk for that. Uh, and a few different topics that perhaps this might have sparked your interest in. 
And so I'll leave it at that and have a couple minutes for questions if there are any. Uh, and so yeah, I'm Sarah View, I'm Pam, uh, Pam Selly on the Terraform Core team. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Pamasore. Uh, my website for links to everything is pamselly.com. Uh, and uh, Terraform is on GitHub if you would like to look at the source code yourself and uh, you know, report bugs, fix things, um, you know, thanks.